Okay, so I've been progressing with the skin in a bit. And it's sort of a bit cluttered in here, but we can see with these antennas, you know, they're working quite well. We've done the same as we did to start the antenna. But we also want to bear in mind that these antennas are driven by the ribbon spine. So if there's a problem with the ribbon spine, or the ribbon's not working correctly, or we need to do a bit more skinning it on the actual ribbon nerve surface, it's not going to, and any skinning we do is not going to affect it because if the problem lies underneath, we need to solve that first, and then when we go ahead and start skinning above, you know, we can see the results we want. And I've just been messing about with the spine, the sine wave a bit. And one thing we had in here was, was we had the drop off set to zero. So I'm just going to clean this up actually. Um, I'll just move the eye back. And I'll switch its sign off because we have that sign weight attribute. Now we had the drop off on this set to zero. And that was because we want the top and bottom not to be affected, so we want it to drop off when it gets to the top and the bottom, otherwise the actual mesh will be jumping out to the end of this sign over here. So so you can see with the drop off set to we've got the drop off set to zero, so no drop off. You can see you know you're getting this broken part of the antenna and again at the bottom it's going to break away from that base joint so we want it constrained to the top and the bottom so we had this drop off set to 1 which worked quite well you know that's working how we want but as we start to increase this you can see that that drop off isn't really working really well because it's keeping the um, sign more or less in the middle and it's dropping off too fast and another thing we want to notice here is if we select the nerve surface that we use for the ribbon so it's in the extra to hide groups and I've just shown that we can see that this was evenly spaced so if we go to the original on the right hand side you can see they're evenly spaced all the way up so that means any sign that we assign to it any sign we assign to it means it's going to be evenly spaced between them again but as we start to stretch this up you can see it's suddenly um, not so evenly distributed along see these quite large patches here and then they're coming quite compressed and they're coming quite compressed near to the joints that we were skinning with so there's a couple of things we want to do is we want to actually edit the skin weights on the ribbon surface so because we did um, skin the ribbon surface we can also edit the smooth skin of the ribbon surface and because we didn't want this drop off so I've set the, I'll set the drop off to zero and to get a better drop off what I'm going to do is set it so we have the full effect of the sine wave up and down this antenna but then what I'm going to do because that was a blend shape we took this nerve surface applied it to the ribbon surface as a blend shape what we can actually do is there is an option to paint blend shape weights as well so I'm just going to switch this sign off by going to the sine weight set it to zero and selecting this ribbon surface I can go to edit deformers and we can see here paint blend shapes weight tool and I'll bring up the tools here and it's pretty much the same as the paint weights tool you have the blend shape and you have a paintbrush so I'm going to go show isolate view selected press Y to reactivate the last tool so it's, it's the same as before um, you've got the surface you can brush on here and you've got pretty much the same tool settings so what I'm actually going to do here is it's set to white which by default it, the blend shape is going to affect everything and all I'm going to do is replace with a value of zero on the first four spans So one, two, three, four. Can remove it and just make sure I've got a value of one. So 
So these first four CVs have a value of 0. Same at the top. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so we've just got that straight from 0 to 1, and all I'm going to do is switch to smooth and flood it three times. 1, 2, 3. And then just. Actually, I'll flood it again. Make it a bit. a few more times, actually. Make it a bit smoother. And then at the. Eight, just at the top corners, I'm going to replace with a value of 0 again, and these bottom corners. So that way. We're getting the same drop off, but no matter how much we stretch this now, we're going to get a nicer drop off because, you know, this is. we're going to apply the full sine wave to the blend shape, and then through the blend shape paint weights, we're actually just having the drop off through here instead. So that's going to work out a lot better. So I'll show isolate view selected. I'll stretch that back up there. And we can still we're still getting its compression in here. And again this isn't to do with the blend shape, this is to do with the skinning. So one thing we we'll want to do is select this nerve surface and go to the skin weights tool. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna select the nerve surface and these three joints. Let's go short isolate view selected just so I can isolate these okay alright so in here you can also increase the size of the graph so earlier on I was skinning so I wanted to see quite a lot of joints but it's quite a big area this so there's these two up and down options here so to expand you know how many joints you want to see I'm going to flood a value of 1 onto the top um, top joint I'm actually going to flood so on these bottom ones actually I'll flood a value of 0 so we're getting it all at the top now I'll take the start joint Start replacing with a value of one. Actually, undo that because this is probably a bit, bit tedious. Going to undo the flooding. Just bring back to the normal skim weights. Oops. Flood a few smooths in there. Same with the top. We can see we try to just smooth this out a bit. And the start. You see it's doing quite a good job. So we've got that stretch in there. You can see by flooding the smooth of these, we can start to get it to evenly distribute. If we add too much to the mid, you can see it's actually removing it from these bottom joints and it's pulling these up. So we want to start replacing I'll get quite a large brush size brush size um get to a sharp fall off a quick fall off replace the middle and then control click the bottoms to remove it and again um good smooth and we'll flood it again so it's just a case of getting it to smooth drop off not the harsh drop offs we had before that we're getting that uneven distribution. Replace with a value of zero. Value of zero. Much like the skinnier ever of everything else, it's just going in and refining it over and over again. And replace with a value of zero. We will expect to see a bit of compression on these end joints, but we don't want to see too much, so I'm going to keep smoothing it. Go to start joint, 
replace with a value of 1 and joint replace with a value of 1 and we can see might need a little bit more work but we can see the compression isn't happening as much so now if we apply that sine wave we can see it's not constrained to the middle anymore it's actually getting quite evenly distributed along this antenna and you can see the result of that if we take the previous antenna so we'll just do the same to the opposite side after this tutorial but you can see over here the original sine wave before we edited the skin weights on that ribbon it was you know sticking to the middle and no matter what we do we're not getting much sine wave up at the top so by editing the skin weights on the actual nerve surface, the actual ribbon that means we can get that sign to apply much more smoothly so that's looking cool and this also means if we move this down we're going to get much smoother pauses in these antennas. So you can see we get these nice smooth curves again. Okay, um, reset these back to zero, move everything back, the rotates and translates. And we just want to think, you know, constantly keep thinking about how we can improve the rigging, how we can add more functionality. So, for instance, um, these joints here that we use to, to skin this ribbon spine, you can see here, if I show the wireframe, scaling this is going to actually scale that joint. Scaling that joint, you know, scales the skinning. So, it would be a good idea, and that's just the scale in the Y. So, it'd be quite cool if we could have the scale of this affect that as well. So we locked it earlier, so we could go to edit. Um, so I'll do it on the other side because I've actually unlocked it on this. So I'll select this, go to edit, uh, channel controls. We'd go down here, find the scale Y, move it across, right click on it, unlock selected. So with this curve, what I'm going to do is just um, select it, shift select the joint and go to constraint scale and we're just going to just constrain the Y hit apply so just to show this a bit more I'm going to move stretch it out so rotating this when it's stretched it's not going to have a massive amount of influence but we can start to scale this so it's almost like a tangent control so it's scaling that joint which is scaling its effect on the skinning down here uh, don't set the scale back to 1, we want to set it back to 0 and if we wanted do the same on these, so I'll select the top control Select this bottom control, go to edit, um, uh, channels, uh, edit, sorry, channel controls, go to the scale, scale Y, move, and I'll just unlock selected again, and we'll do the same. Select the controls, shift select the I constraint the joint, sorry. Go to the scale, just constrain the Y. Do the same at the bottom. Into that joint. So now if we move this out, you can see here scaling it is going to affect the tangent, so we can start to get like pretty, some quite good results actually here, so we can get it to pinch by scaling it into a negative scale can scale it up back to 1 and then on these top joints as well 
we can start scaling these. So it's just affecting the tangent, essentially the tangent of that uh, nerve surface. So if we want actually, um, we could set it so we can see scaling these controls might visually look a bit annoying. If you want to get some really funky tangent you've got to also get a really funky um, control curve that might clog up the scene and look a bit distracting. Well, obviously we don't want to move that too far away from the eye. So it might look a bit too distracting that. So instead what we could do is going to reset these back to a straight line. I'm going to select these three joints, go to the outliner, F to frame. So again, we're thinking about what the animator is going to see and how the animator is going to use this rig and that control scaling looks looks a bit ridiculous, it might get in the way so I'm going to delete these scale constraints and instead I'm going to add a scale attribute so that way you can still access the scale but we're not physically scaling this curve. So scale Y, lock and hide selected and with these three selected and I'm going to select the ones on the other side as well just so we add the same attribute to all six controls edit, add attribute and let's put tangent and I'll put a... we don't need a minimum actually we don't need a maximum but I'll put a default of one because the scale, you know, obviously the default scale is one so again we don't want a minimum because you know we don't like the scale of zero but for these if we go into a negative scale it actually works quite well so we're just going to leave a default as one and click add it's added the tangent control and now all we need to do is select the curve go to general editors connection edit and instead of a constraint which we're going to do pretty much the same thing but doing it through a custom attribute means it's not actually going to physically scale this control curve. So I'm going to connect the tangent to the scale Y. Do the same up here. Select the curve, reload left. Select the joint, reload right. We want the tangent to scale Y. And again, reload left, tangent into the scale Y. We'll just test it out. Moving the tangent, see it's having the same effect. We're affecting that tangent. We've got the minus tangent, so I'll just hide nerve surfaces so I can see that a bit better. So we can get these really, really funky curves now. So you see just by adding the scale attribute or connecting it to the scale so we've got that tangent in there we can start to get these actually really really funky curves now and that's with the added because we remade that ribbon spine with more joints you can see it's preserving its volume there's no awkward kinks, twists, bends, it's not snapping that's looking really good and again for the animator this is going to make a lot more sense as a tangent it's going to be a lot more visually appealing than having this this curve you know scale across the screen so you just always got to bear in mind as you're rigging this as you're skinning it just go through and keep thinking about the functionality keep thinking about little things the animator might like to control so just by adding the scale we've drastically improved you know the control of this antenna and we can do the same for the arms as well so just keep an open mind keep thinking of ways you can improve it as you go along okay so I'm just going to continue with the normal skinning of this mesh again